Good morning and welcome to morning prayer from All Saints Church in Washington Courthouse, Ohio um, for the commemoration of the ordination of Florence Lee Tim Oi, first um, woman priest in the Anglican Communion. Uh, and I'm going to read from the uh, from the entry from the For All the Saints, which is the Canadian Anglican um, book of saints, uh, not, not because, um, and she is, she is, um, commemorated in the Episcopal Church. There, com she's commemorated on a different day in the Episcopal Church today, but, um, I like the, uh, the write-up better in the, in the Anglican Church of Canada book, where they refer to her as the first woman priesthood in the Anglican Communion. After her birth in 1907, Lee Tim Oi's father called her Much Beloved. Um, when she was baptized as a student, Tim Oi chose uh, the name Florence from the Lady of the Lamp. If you don't know who the Lady of the Lamp is, that's Florence Nightingale. Um, Florence is celebrated worldwide for the witness to Christ that she lived out as the first female priest in the Anglican Communion. In 1931, at the ordination of a deaconess, she heard and responded to the call to ministry. She was made a deacon in 1941 and was given charge of the Anglican congregation in the Portuguese colony of Macau, thronged with refugees from war-torn China. When a priest could no longer travel from Japanese-occupied territory to preside for her at the Eucharist, the Bishop of Hong Kong asked her to meet him in Free China, um, uh, before that, there's stuff that happened. Um, this is where having two different references helps because they have different information. Um, so during that time when, when a priest couldn't come before she was called to this particular town, um, she was... Um, Ah, it's not even in this one, but it is in, in the... In, sorry, I'm rambling. Uh, she was, as a deaconess, deaconess uh, given special authorization to, um, to celebrate the Eucharist, which was irregular, um, because it's only supposed to be done by a priest, um, by her bishop, um, the Bishop of Hong Kong. Um, in that period of time when no priest could get there. And um, the the Bishop of the Archbishop of Canterbury um, questioned that decision but accepted it as a as a kind of as a pastoral emergency. The reasoning behind it was that that the Bishop of Hong Kong gave was that um, that no one um, due to prejudice or circumstance, should be denied the sacraments. So the prejudice here was the, um, the Chinese movement um, suppressing Christianity that made it impossible for a priest to get there, and the Japanese occupation of China, which was part of, a big part of that. Um, so in order to in order to make sure that they could receive the sacraments, he took that extraordinary measure of authorizing her. And um, in uh, so in 1944, uh, he he called her um, to meet in a town in there was a, a town in a section little section of China that was still free that he could get to and she could get to. And they met there, and he ordained her a priest, uh, a priest in the Church of God, and um, and that regularized her her celebrating the Eucharist. Um, and the uh, Archbishop of Canterbury did object to that, but had no authority to stop it. Um, 
so he ordained her a priest in the Church of God. Um, and to diffuse controversy, in 1946, um, she surrendered her priest license, but not her holy orders. Uh, um, the knowledge of which carried her through the Maoist persecution. For the next 39 years, she served faithfully under very difficult circumstances, particularly after the communists took over mainland China. In 1983, arrangements were made for her to come to Canada. So what she lived through in, 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 um, what she lived through in, in, uh, China, um, was, was really quite awful. Um, she was forced to, uh, to work in, um, Uh, she was forced to work in a factory, and I'm trying to remember where else. There's some place else she was forced to work, um, and and finally, and she was she was forced to undergo political re-education because she was de designated as a um, counter-revolutionary. Um, after which, she went into the mountains to pray um, because she was scared of being seen with her fellow Christian friends. Um, she said that she nearly committed suicide during those long years of persecution. The Red Guards even forced her to cut up her own church vestments with scissor scissors. Um, for the, so that 39 years of that. In 1983, arrangements were made for her uh, well, there's something just before that. Um, yeah, she was forced to work on a farm and then on a fa in a factory. In 1979, the churches reopened and Florence resumed her public ministry. Uh, two years later, she was allowed to visit family members in Canada. Um, where she was appointed as an honorary assistant at St. John's Chinese Congregation and St. Matthew's Parish in Toronto. The Anglican Church of Canada had by this time approved the ordination of women to the priesthood. Excuse me. And in 1984, the 40th anniversary of her ordination, Miss Lee was, with great joy and thanksgiving, reinstated as a priest. This event was celebrated not only in Canada, but also at Westminster Abbey and at Sheffield in England, even though the Church of England had not yet approved the ordination of women. From that date until her death in 1992, she exercised her priesthood with such faithfulness and quiet dignity that she won tremendous respect for herself and increasing support for other women seeking ordination. She was awarded doctorates of divinity by General Theological Seminary, New York, and Trinity College, Toronto. The very quality of Miss Lee's ministry in China and in Canada, and the grace with which she exercised her priesthood helped to convince many people throughout the communion and beyond that the Holy Spirit was certainly working in and through women priests. Her contribution to the church far exceed, exceeded the expectations of those involved in her ordination in 1944. She died on February 26, 1992. Quite a woman who lived very, very difficult circumstances with grace and dignity and perseverance. Let us prepare for worship. I will give you as a light to the nations, that my salvation may reach the end of the earth. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. 
Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded to the dry land. Come, let us kneel down, kneel, bow down, and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his land. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Galatea, chapter 1, verse 18, to chapter 2, verse 10. Then, after three years, I did go up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas, and stayed with him fifteen days. But I did not see any other apostle except James and the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you, before God, I do not lie. Then I went to the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still unknown by sight to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard it said, The one who formerly was persecuting us is now proclaiming the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. Then after fourteen years I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. I went up in response to a revelation. Then I laid before them, though only in a private meeting with the, knowledge, with the acknowledged leaders, the gospel that I proclaimed among the Gentiles, in order to make sure that I was not running, or had not run, in vain. But even Titus, who was with me, was not compelled to be circumcised, though he was Greek. But because of false believers secretly brought in, who slipped in to spy on the freedom we have in Christ Jesus, so that they might enslave us, we did not submit to them even for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might always remain with you. And from those who were supposed to be acknowledged leaders, what they actually were makes no difference to me. God shows no partiality. Those leaders contributed nothing to me. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel for the uncircumcised, just as Peter had been entrusted with the gospel for the circumcised, for he who worked through Peter making him an apostle to the circumcised, also worked through me, sending me to the Gentiles. And when James and Cephas and John, who were acknowledged pillars, recognized the grace that had been given to me, they gave to Barnabas and me the right hand of fellowship, agreeing that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised. They asked only one thing, that we remember the poor, which was actually what I was eager to do. Here ends the reading. This is really important because it's <coughs> pointing out in this place where there's the blended community um, that differences within the faith are not only okay, but they, they strengthen it. Um, we can recognize a calling to follow Christ in somebody who does it quite different than, differently than we do. We see the same gospel proclaimed, the same gospel lived, just in a different way. Um, and and that's really important. This this goes right along with with um, Paul's other writings that talk about you know we are not uh, disciples. We are we are not disciples of Apollos or of Paul or whoever else, we are disciples of Christ. So he's saying that that difference doesn't have to equal denominationalism or division, sectarianism. Um, as long as we're focused on the same gospel. So the gospel is is broad enough that it can be lived in different cultures, have different, to a certain extent, meaning, but the same focus. So 
the focus that they saw that 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 was completely apart from um, anything to do with different ways of living the gospel or different um, different cultures that it's speaking into, the underlying imperative is to remember the poor. That that core to the gospel that Jesus has of of and and the poor is a not just speaking economically. Um, this is this is all of those who are pushed pushed to the margins for any reason, which typically leads to poverty, but not entirely, not always. Um, this is the core of the gospel. And it's interesting how, how he puts it, remember the poor. Um, in Greek, that's even more powerful than it is in English. It doesn't mean to just think about them every once in a while. Um, it goes to the root of that word, remember. So make them members again. Um, the Greeks were very, very specific about that type of usage of language. Um, English makes it kind of loose. Um, Paul here is saying that our duty is to bring the poor back into the fold, to make them members with us. Not just to feed the poor, not just to think about the poor, not just to do some little ministry thinking we're doing a good thing, but to actually bring the poor back into the fold. Make them members, once again, of society, of Christianity, of our community, um, to stop dividing. So that's actually really, really powerful. The Lord be with you. Actually, going back to Florence Lee, uh, Lee Timoy, um, the whole thing of the bishop giving her special license to celebrate the Eucharist, even though she wasn't a priest, um, is about that remembering. He recognized a situation where a group of members of the church, in this case, were being divided from from the rest um, by by denying them the sacrament. So he found a way to remember them. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we thank you for calling Florence Lee Timoy, much beloved daughter, to be the first woman to exercise the office of a priest in our communion. By the grace of your Spirit, inspire us to follow her example serving your people with patience and happiness all our days, and witnessing in every circumstance to our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the same Spirit, one God, now, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. 
through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us by your, in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you, and I will not see you online tomorrow morning. I will be in it for a uh, um, follow-up medical test. Um, hoping all goes well. I, when I was in hospital, they saw what they call a pseudocyst in my um, gallbladder, which they expect to be gone, but they just want to make sure it's gone. Um, so that test will be tomorrow morning. But I will see you on Thursday morning. Um, thank you for joining us.